once again, gamers and geeks. I'm Taylor. I hope you haven't run out of steam for Choo Choo Charles videos just yet, because we have got way more spicy theories and facts about everybody's favorite spider leg train. Well, pretty much the only spider leg train. Anyway, hop all aboard and let's take a listen to the top 10 scary Choo Choo Charles origin theories, part two. Hey, there's a ton of games out there, so let us know down below in the comments what you'd like to hear more of if Choo Choo Charles is doing it for you right now. Number 10, Thomas the Tank Engine. Now I thought I'd start off this video with one origin that's a little bit outside the context and go in a bit of a meta aspect if you don't mind. Now if you didn't know already, Choo Choo Charles rather impressively was developed by a single person studio, one Gavin Eisenbeis of Two Star Games. And when the first trailers of Choo Choo Charles came out, it caught the internet by storm since, well, you know, we like creativity and it kind of stood out since I dare you to name the other horror game about a demon train that's on the market these days. Days. Naturally, people were pretty curious where the story and the concept came from, with many people thinking it was connected to an in-universe children's book from Stephen King's legendarily hit or miss Dark Tower series called Charlie the Choo Choo. However, despite the super similar names, the real basis for Charles is none other than Thomas the Tank Engine. In a recent interview, Eisenbeis was asked what inspired the game. He was asked if it was inspired by popular mods like Thomas the Tank Engine replacing Mr. X in Resident Evil 2 or Trains replacing Alduin in Skyrim. Gavin laughed and clarified that while those mods are really funny, they didn't actually inspire the game at all, and the real inspiration was just wanting to take something beloved from his childhood and corrupting it, with characters like Thomas the Tank Engine and Mr. Top of Hat being reimagined as demon trains and a greedy mining tycoon cult leader. Suffice to say, I think it worked. Number 9, Aliens. Okay, now we're into the theories, and we should probably start with the serious ones. It's obvious taking just one look at Mr. Choo Choo Charles that whatever it is, it does not belong in this world. And maybe that's because it's not from this one. We know that Charles has been on the island of Araneum for a long time. Is it possible that it came to Earth? as part of a star-faring species? If you've ever seen John Carpenter's legendary classic horror movie, The Thing, it's about an alien of unknown origin that crashes down to Earth and starts eating its way through the staff of an Antarctic research base as it takes their form and shapeshifts one by one. It was doing Among Us about 30 years before anybody else was. Now maybe it's just the giant crab legs, but The Thing evokes the same uh, things that looking at the demon train does. Maybe that explains some of its more unique abilities. Maybe the train form isn't like a hybrid of monster and train, but rather something imitating what it saw on the island. Seeing the train cars and railways all over, trying to do its best to blend into the environment and failing horribly. Easy does it. <laughs> Number 8, From Hell. I think it's pretty natural to take one look at Charles and declare him a demon. He'd understand. I mean, he fits just about every definition of the word. He's got a ravenous lust for human flesh, he seems nigh unstoppable, and he's got little goals and ambition beyond causing pain. It seems entirely possible that Choo Choo Charles is a horrible demon that is making this island a significantly worse place to live. Now this got me thinking. There's an urban legend about a group of Siberian miners who dug a hole and claimed that they had uncovered a portal directly to hell, and that when they put a microphone down, they recorded the sounds of the damned. It's pretty spooky stuff. And it got me wondering if maybe something similar happened with these miners. Perhaps when they were digging, they uncovered a portal of some kind into the nether. And that's where these eggs initially came from. Charles having a secondary, more powered up form explicitly called Hell Charles made me wonder too. Is that telling us just where he hails from? Or is that just to drive home how bad things are gonna get for you? Number seven, a Damon engine. Okay, bear with me here. A lot of these entries are gonna get a little bit goofy and we're definitely gonna get pretty far out there in terms of theorizing, but we are discussing the possible origins of a Giga Demon train that's got spider legs, so hey, I think out there is all we've got. In the universe of Warhammer 40k, which I am an embarrassingly big fan of, there's something called a Daemon Engine, in which to try and make very complicated lore simple, is a hybrid monster that's created when a tech priest binds a demon's soul to a piece of mechanics, creating a wretched merging of the two. Now the average Daemon Engine is mostly teeth, claws, and hate, and are incredibly violent, aggressive, and sound an awful lot like our friend Charles. Now do I think the warp, machine spirits, the omnissiah, and the forces of chaos, do I think all of that is in this this game? As much as I hope, no, not really. Although I very much wish they were, because I would absolutely love to see what a bolter could do to Charles. But the idea of a demonic host being bound to the steel of the train is definitely a possibility for the origin of this dark choo-choo. That's a very serious sentence that I just said. Number 6, 
Defender. You know, you take a look at Charles and you assume he's evil. Sure. Maybe it's just because he's got a giant gaping maw filled with spiky teeth, and maybe it's because he patrols around the island consuming all living things in front of him, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's a bad guy, you know? Got me wondering just a little bit. Is Charles truly evil? Or is Charles just like a wild animal, lashing out and behaving the only way it knows how, and we're ascribing human traits to it? Near the end of the game, you get a cool little glimpse at some cave carvings that show giant spiders hunted by cavemen, suggesting that this spider crab demon species has been around for a really long time, possibly predating humanity as a whole even. Maybe Charles is lashing out at the island's residents, not just out of malice, but out of a need to protect itself and protect its home. Since Charles does seem kind of hell bent on not letting you get at any of the eggs, and in the end of the game, we learn there is a whole plethora of eggs underneath the island. Maybe we're kind of the bad guy after all, since, you know, in classic human fashion, we came to this beautiful island, we took a natural formation, and we mined it, harvested all of its natural resources, cut down all the trees, and we're threatening the ecosystem of the peaceful giant spider train community. Just remember, there's two sides to every spider train story. Number five, motherhood. Now, just because everyone calls the train Charles doesn't even necessarily mean that's its proper name. No one really got a chance to sit down with it and ask. Maybe this train doesn't even have any concept of gender at all the same way we understand it. I mean, it's a big demon train. It's very likely the only reason it's even named Charles is because of the mining company that discovered it. Now, in the end of the game, we see a sea of eggs waiting to hatch, possibly suggesting an army of choo-choos coming our way for that inevitable choo-choo Charles too. Could this mean that entire time, Charles had been a mama train and we didn't even know? Kind of like that one Godzilla movie from the 2000s? Or perhaps Charles exists outside of gender at all and is just capable of recreating itself, which is absolutely horrifying to consider because of the larger implications there. Can this species just keep making more trains? Was Charles the original scary demon train? Or was he just the latest in a long list of scary demon trains? These are the kind of things that stop me from sleeping at night. Number four, conspiracy. Okay. Bear with me. We've been talking a lot in this video about some possibilities that Charles was birthed or found, but what if in some twisted way it was created and guided by the mining corporation? Now we know that they found those eggs beneath the island's bedrock and eventually inadvertently unleashed Charles and the population, sort of condemning the island. But what if the company willingly created Charles in some sort of bizarre conspiracy to seize the island's resources and get a serious edge on the competition like a very complicated Scooby-Doo plot? The Warren Charles Mining Company seems to believe in some way that it can control Mr. Choo Choo Charles himself and perhaps use him as a tool to further their company and their financial goals. So is it at all possible that they intentionally created and merged into this train or something and realized very quickly they would not be able to handle it? Certainly would not be the first time a fictional evil corporation thought they had a handle on the local population and watched it all blow up. Just ask how the bad guys in like Alien or Avatar, how well they did against that. Number three. The Entity. Now these next three points all kind of build off of each other, so pay attention. For our next entry, we're gonna take a look at one of my absolute favorite video games ever, Dead by Daylight. The asymmetrical horror game pits four survivors against horror movie icons like Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, and a litany of original monsters and psychopaths, and the game takes place in this purgatorial hell run by an immense, monstrous reality warping monster called The Entity that feeds on the suffering of humans and keeps them in an endless cycle of death rebirth and pain. Now in the actual game proper, we never really get too good a look at the entity itself because it's this swarming presence, but it is felt all over the game. It controls every aspect of the trials, it's what killers are trying to feed and what survivors escape from. Now where I'm going with all this is that the entity seems to manifest itself with gigantic spider-like crabs that spread throughout the realm, and it's what we see when a survivor is carried away to their death. So the entity is about as powerful a demon as they come in fiction, being able to trap humans in this endless dream-like state of death and rebirth, being able to summon all these monsters inside of its realm to do its bidding, and seemingly able to take whatever form that it sees fit. As in the game, all the maps are said to be extensions of the entity's physical body. So what I'm saying is, could Charles be a similar sort of reality warping demon like the entity? Is that why when you die in game, you sort of just pop back to life with a few less scrap? 
Charles is controlling you and keeping you in the island as a little plaything. It sort of explains too why there's those ghosts around the island. Could they he be controlling those as well as his little minions? Also, let me be the first to shout this out here. Dead by Daylight does collabs with pretty much every single cool horror movie series you can think of. Resident Evil, Silent Hill, Stranger Things, Texas Chainsaw, Saw, Halloween, Choo Choo Charles, DLC, when? And if this one happens, just remember, Top 10 Gaming said it first and uh... I'll take a check for the royalties if that happens. Number two, ancient evil. There are many things old Charles could be, but the most likely is that Charles is an ancient evil way beyond our comprehension that's been doing this long before anyone ever set foot on the island. Like I said a few times, we can find some stone tablets that depict a gigantic spider being thwarted off by some caveman hunters. Now, unless it's part of the game that the island is off the coast of Australia, and that's just how big the local spiders are, this is the biggest piece of evidence we've got that whatever Charles and his buddies are have been on this island for a real, real long time. Now when I started getting into Choo Choo Charles, I had thought it was going to turn out that it was like an old eldritch Lovecraft god, like when I was bringing up the Dead by Daylight entity, and it does kind of seem like that's where it's going. Whatever Charles was, this species of arachnid monster seemingly used to dominate the island before man's hubris thought them conquerors at some unpoint in time. The spider beings were sealed away in a giant temple, which is eventually where the Warren Charles Mining Company would discover the eggs and kickstart this whole mess in the first place. And finally, number one, an old god. So we're talking about Charles being some sort of ancient evil that's existed since the primordial ooze days, and it got me thinking of who else but H.P. Lovecraft, which I would say inspired Charles even on a small scale. The story it reminds me the most of is The Shadow Over Innismouth, which I'm going to assume most of you have never read, so I'll do a quick summary. A young man visits a small fishing hamlet in Massachusetts, only to discover unspeakable Speakable horrors that lay long dormant beneath the village have corrupted the townspeople, who now worship and serve this dark god Dagon and his deep ones, which reminds me a great deal of how Mr. Warren Charles and his men have all seemed to begin to worship Choo Choo Charles himself, making that little gang of Charles cosplayers that keep trying to get up in your business. In Lovecraft's works, oftentimes the old gods are so vividly powerful that their mere existence, just knowing about them, drives men to the brink of madness, causing them to want to serve them with an unquestionable loyalty. Given how fervent some of these cultists are, could Charles be having this effect on the local population? He certainly got that effect on us at Top 10 Gaming because we cannot stop thinking about this guy. And if you want more Top 10 Choo Choo Charles videos, well, click down below. We got loads and loads of them. That's all for this video, my friends. Thanks so much for listening to me ramble, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take it easy.